everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower cards catfishes. So today I'm not going to talk about catfishes, lower cards, plecos at all. I'm going to talk actually more about snails. And most people's encounters with snails in the aquarium tend to be as pests. And pests, uh, snails, is a wide variety of different uh, species, different taxa different groups, they can be wildly unrelated and many aren't actually identified particularly well or correctly because it can be really difficult, there's not actually that much hobby sort of information on them. But many people's solution to snails, well it does vary a lot from using chemical pesticides which are largely copper based, obviously an issue if you've got other invertebrates but it can also be manual removal. And one of the worst ones, I well, one of the most annoying ones, I think, has to be these guys. So these, if you're familiar with them, these are assassin snails, and I'll show different footage of them. So these are a type of, I believe they're related to whelk, and they are a, well... They're a predatory snail that feeds on other snails and that doesn't mean they will just be feeding on, if I just have them up, it doesn't mean they'll just be feeding on uh, pest snails, they'll be feeding on all sorts of foods um, and also other snails. So if you're overfeeding and that's most likely the reason you've got pest snails, then these guys are going to start populating in higher numbers too. But the reason I'm filming about it is because I've had infestations of these guys. So why did I get them exactly? So I actually got them for a totally different type of snail. So these guys, I'm going to show, are known as Asalomi spixi. So they are related to mystery snails. And they're, so Ampelouridae is the family. So these are quite attractive little active snails, willing to feed on a lot of things. So we show here so that's what their shells look like I don't actually have that many shells left and they got very solid shells with a very solid operculum but so I got the assassin snails to deal with them and they did deal with them and they dealt with them very well the thing is with Ampelouridae is they are voracious feeders and they're quite dextral with how they feed and they're happy to reach for different food sources um, they can eat, a lot of them can eat anything from Anubis to all sorts of different plants. So, Asoni Spixi were definitely a problem. I got mine from a breeder in Germany. But then I decided why not get assassin snails. My actual pet snails, my um, Tyler and Melania, are too big. Now, if anyone knows anything about Tyler and Melania, well, their common name is often the rabbit snail, so here is a collection of shells, and there's a reason why I have a collection. So assassin snails are traditionally sold to deal with pest snails, and not with big snails, because they're not very good at feeding on big snails, because I still have some left. But you can see the size of these snails. So I probably only got started with maybe 15 in total, of a variety of different species, I assume. So here's one of the most decorative or beautiful shells, I think, in them. And we've got another large one. I believe they're, I'm not sure how long they live. I did grow one out, and I probably still have it, so I'd say maybe six, seven years. Got one of the darker ones, and I traditionally associate these with being uh, having the orange bodies. Um, there's sort of lighter ones with maybe sort of darker, sort of dusky coloured bodies. I don't know which species they are, I just have a lot. And so that is the problem with assassin snails, is they will kill more ornamental snails, the lighter, uh, the larger snails. And also, the problem is with Tyler Melania, River Paraday, uh, River Paraday snails in general, River Paraday means that they're live bearers. And they're also, like assassin snails, I believe that it's done it uh, dioecious, I keep getting confused with um, monoecious and dioecious. So they're not hermaphroditic snails, these guys, and neither are assassins, which means if you have one assassin, you're maybe not going to have issues. These guys also breed with their live breeder, um, 
live breeders, live spawners, hence the name Viviparous Day, which is Viviparous, they give birth to live young. And they do it really slowly. So any of those babies are well within the feeding range of assassin cells and they will get eaten. And you might think that this is a load of um, Tyler Melania, that most of these I've bred myself is like part like, oh that's not much. This is a jar of them and it, there's so many that it's just sticking out. And it's not just the adults. I haven't had any juveniles breed for a while. Um, I mean, I haven't had any adults manage to actually spawn any babies successfully for a while. I've got many, like, small juveniles in there that have been killed. Like, this is a traditional damage from the wild. So they are, I believe, mostly wild caught. So you will see them with these, this damage to the shell, the pitting and stuff like that in the wild for Tyler Melania and many snails that are wild caught. Just expect the damage, but you won't see the levels of like, these ones. You could tell they're captive bed when they don't have, a lot of the wild caught ones should have damage to the end of the tail, I find, um, the end of the shell. I find that quite common, but the captive bred ones shouldn't. So you can kind of see how many of the ones I've bred and sometimes I don't notice because they're not actually always active Tyler Melania and other Viva Power Day snails. So this is kind of more of a warning of why you shouldn't should maybe think before assassin snails because there's no issue with having pest snails. Pest snails are great indicators for having um, whether you're overfeeding, they're great with dealing with waste, many fishes will eat them. They won't eat assassin snails so much, assassin snails are too hard. Um, they're not easy to see the eggs, so you can't do massive removals like you would with apple and mystery snails. And most annoyingly, they also cause issues with other snails. So these are, which I've not managed to get any in a while, and I'd like to try and keep them again. So these are some other River Power Day, they're white wizards, I can't remember the scientific name. But these also breed very slowly. They're, I believe this one already had issues though because you can see the shell isn't forming normally, which it should do. So I would always say definitely think before you get assassin snails because not just do does one, is one likely to kill, um, they can kind of like swarm. The other thing is I am a little bit wary of them with certain fishes. Some fishes are very slow, which is why I don't like Ampelura Day. So uh, apple snails, mystery snails, Asoni Spixi, all of those with slow moving fishes because they do seem to be able to get on them and the fishes don't move or can't move. And these guys just swarm all of the really pretty snails. Even though these can be quite pretty, they're quite variable as well. But I can do videos on identifying certain different aquarium snails. We don't get that much diverse in the UK. I would like to get a few more different species, but um so I've met the only way I've managed to eradicate assassin snails is actually by manual removal. They're I've got a snail trap and they will actually go in and then get back out. So personally it's really just picking them out when you see them, and it is a task. So I've been doing it maybe six months. Actually, when I go into room, if I see a snail, and assuming I've not got potentially any chemicals on my arms, I will actually go in and remove it, which is a hell of a task. So that's why I don't recommend actually getting them in the first place, because then you'll be having to actually remove them in the um, second place if you want anything more ornamental in the snail department because otherwise all you'll get is assassin snails. Some people have managed to get the populations to kind of equal but I've never managed um, and I had that many um, rabbit snails, Tyler Melania. I've still got many more and now they're starting to feed so I've actually wiped the assassin snails out through manual removal in one tank I think because I've seen several babies in one go and they only release like one at a time. This tank I don't think I've managed because I've still seen the odd assassin snail. So, and this one's probably the more difficult one to move anything from. 
So don't get loaches, don't get assassin snails, don't get any other organism to solve your snail problem. Deal with the actual problem. Um, as only spooks, I'd say is probably maybe the exception, just because they can eat your live plants, they can reach for fishes, there's nothing that you can really starve them of, opposed to pest snails. Pest snails are just great indicators because they die, at, they live and die really quickly, to put politely. So I'll end this video here because it's kind of more of a quick one. And if you like my videos, please comment, like and subscribe and goodbye.